welcome back. Um, I'm just going to tell you a variant of the octopus. I'm telling myself a few wee flies um, for a trip them in down to Car Morlock. That's them there. So I'm just going to show you how to put them together. So the hook in the vise is a Camazon B175 and size 10. The thread that I'm going to use is Uni3801 red. Now you can use a fire orange thread if you like. But I would suggest using a, a coloured thread for this. And just catching my thread on a couple of mil behind the eye of the hook and working my thread down past the point of the hook and removing the, the waist tag, the tail. You can use glow bright floss. This here is the old lure, lure flash fluorescent yarns. So I'm just going to offer this up over the back of the hook, come around with a pinch and loop. Four or five turns heading down the hook. Just come in then and Lift your waist, take that away in a bit of a tapered cut. Now, the length of your tail can be up to you, you can have it really small and dumpy if you like. Um, just trim mine sort of away the length of the body. Now, what I like to do here too is just to take a turn underneath the tail, come back up on top. The rib, we're just looking at a small uh, gold tinsel. I'm just using a uni miner, size 14. I want the gold side, so I'll just tie it in with the silver side facing myself. Now at this point, I'm just going to work my thread forward, tying everything in. Um, people might see this as a waste of thread, but this will make for a far stronger fly. You don't need to be too fussy on the way back down. You just want to make sure everything's the tail and the rib secured in, because don't forget, this is what's going to hold the fly together. The main part of the fly anyway. Now, just bringing the thread back down to the, the tail, the body. <coughs> I'm just going to use some SLF. This is the summer duck. So, I do love using the SLF. It's nice and translucent dubbing. It's easy to dub as well. We favor the on my hand. Take that away. Just remember to take your dubbing the one direction. And then just bring up your dubbing. Now, don't worry, see if you see a wee bit of red thread at the back on your flags or whatever thread you're using. Don't worry about it, the fish won't mind. Just work the dubbing forward. I think once it go forward to the eye, stroke it back. Now, the body haggle. This is just a golden olive cock haggle. Well, it was a saddle. Then I died a, a golden olive. So just a couple of turns to catch that in. Just fold the stem back, bring your thread up over the top, nice and tight, break away the stem of the haggle. I, I always like to get two turns going at the shoulder of the fly here. And then four to five turns down the body. follow this around with your Mailar. Now, don't worry, just bring your Mailar through as, a, as your rib. I don't know, three or four times should be plenty. Sweep everything back. It wants to go forward. Now, just going to come back again. Come back round with my rib. Just slip there. Bring the, the Mailar up. Catch it in nice and tight. Let's just sort this out in a second. Just come in and sweep everything back. Bring your thread down to the eye. Don't be tempted to tie this back. Bring your thread to the eye. And then back up. Nice and tight. You can break away the tip of the haggle at the back. Then I'm going to come in with my Velcro. I'm going to bring out some of the some of the SLF, there's really no point in putting dubbing on the flies if you're not going to take this wee bit of the bag away if you're not going to bring out some of the dubbing in, into the, the dressing because the uh, SLF, like I say, lovely and translucent now the next tackle, we're looking at a golden olive hand haggle so strip off all the crap at the bottom, or sorry, rubbish, apologies. Now, 
I'm going to take away this side of the feather that's going to contact the hook because the whole feather winding it round it's too much for me. The pattern will be overdressed at that stage. So just stroke them back, start with this up to the hook. Around with a couple of nice turns, fold the tip back, tie up over the top of the tip and the haggle, you can break it away. I'm only going to do two turns of this because we want another haggle to go on the front. That's going to go plenty there for me. Just follow this around with my thread. Now, they're good quality hand haggles, these that I'm using. So I'm just working my thread down to the the end of the hook. Don't want to catch in any other fibers at this point, and I can break that away and work my thread back up. Then we'll come in and just sort the fibers out. Now the front haggle, you're gonna. This is a golden pheasant breast feather that has been dyed yellow. Actually, I'll show you the skin or what's left of it. That's it there. So I dyed it yellow. Right, it's the same with this. I'm probably only going to do a turn and a half to two turns. I don't want to have it too bushy. Right, start for that up. A couple of turns, fold the tip back, still go to the, the eye of the hook with your thread, don't be tempted to tie it back here. Go to the eye, is what I do anyway, I'm not here to preach to you, it's just to show you, just to there, then I can break off the tip. We'll just stroke this back and do one turn in front of the other. Now, any of you favours catch, just bring them out, just be patient. Now, See there, that's going to be enough for me, so I'm just going to come back a wee second here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to hold the feather and strip off some of them fibres. It's just too much, don't, like I said, I don't want to overdress it. So that's plenty there. We'll catch that in. <laughs> nice and tight. Then we'll come in and trim that away. Now at this point, just slick everything back and just tidy up. Just have a wee tidy up. Getting a nice bit of thread down. Then we'll come in and any favours that are caught, we can open it out. Now we're looking the business. It's looking well. Now just a wee added extra, what I like to do with this fly. <coughs> Excuse me, I beg your pardon. I think I've got a bit of a cold working on me again. It's just the, the Amherst. I'm going to take two, just want two fibres, one on either side of the fly, just tear those away. So, just start for this up. Now, you want it to be, well, I want it to be longer than the golden pheasant breast feather. So, just going to tie it in. I can break that off. Now this will give the this will give the fly a wee bit more movement as you're putting it through the water. Now just the reason why I put one on at a time here is just so I can get some sort of measurement for the one that I'm going to put on to your side. Just get it to sit. Break that away. Take the thread down to the eye of the hook again and then back up. Then I'm going to put on two in sunburst. Well, what's left of it? These are ones that have died sunburst. So I'm just looking two feathers for the top, or sorry, two fibers for the top and then two fibers for the bottom. I'm just putting a bit of moisture on them so we can get the two fibers to stay together for me. So just offer this up. Now these are a wee bit shorter than the white ones so we just have to work with them here pinching out a couple of tight turns nice and tight and we can 
break them away. Trim the rest of that off. And then I'm looking to for underneath. So we'll just go back to our feller. And this is the most fiddly part of it. Don't have to put these on guys. You could have just whipped finished. At the end of the just putting the brace feather on. So yet again, just get a length round, catch these in. Now, see to bring this in underneath, just keep your thread, flick everything down. Now I'll bring that, see it directly in underneath for you. Then just tighten up, and if you can break these away and you've got the confidence to break them away, meaning the waist ends, you'll just get a a far neater cut of the break away properly for you. No one there hasn't done there. So we'll just trim it what's left. Then at this point just bring everything back, bring your thread to the eye and just build up a nice red head. Now don't be shy with the head on it. Not a good head on this fly. Nice and bright, nice and nice bright red head if you like. And you want that nice shape on it. A bit like a bead. That's what I try and aim for. Get it right some of the time, not all the time. Now, keeping the thread tight. Straight in with your whip finishing tool. And just lash in a, a whip finish. Put your thread nice and tight. Come in and trim away your tying thread. There you go. It's just a variant on the on the octopus really. You're just adding in the, the few wee extras with the changing the body out as well and the colours of the haggles but that's just going to give it plenty of movement in the water and hopefully a big silver tourist comes up and knobs that for me now onto the head first just a wee coat of super glue now what I do is just support the super glue with my left hand because I don't want to get it onto the, the haggles it'll just ruin your hard work and just dab it the whole way right round. Now, if you're using super glue, guys, please make sure you varnish after using it because water does get in and that will go white with a moisture bloom. Now, what I do at this point, take my needle, just run it in underneath. That will stop everything from rolling down. So, there you go, guys. And that's the, the other ones there. So hopefully they're going to do a turn for me. Five's enough. That's what I have. But that's what I do with all my flies in my box, with the trout or lock flies. Five patterns, and each size is more than enough. Um, I don't have five patterns with the salmon box. Um, I may, I'll show you that in the next video. So I've been sort of way jumping back and forward and then tying some flies for friends. So, but there you go, guys. Hopefully you can tie a few of those up. And if you do. Let me know how you've got on and tight lines for the season ahead. Look after each other and uh, all being well. I'll see you on the next one.